Well, that wasn't the bingo card I had for the USGP. Uh, we had a lot of crazy stuff happen. Um, we'll get all into that and we'll go through every team and some of the spicy stuff that happened. But for, before we do, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second and let's get into this. Okay, so this is the lineup. Pretty standard. I think the big things that stand out is Hamilton and Gasly's up there. Lawson, Colapinto is up there pretty far. It was pretty, pretty good uh, result from everybody there. First off though, Leclerc. Obviously, that was an amazing race. I can't say anything much more for him. Like as soon as he got for, from first corner all the way to the end of the race, it was dominant from Leclerc. He was 10 seconds ahead at the, at the pit stop and over eight seconds. From Sainz, his biggest def uh, his biggest con competition. Just an amazing race, really. Uh, big props to Carlos Sainz, too. I mean, he did really well to the race. Uh, I think his pit strategy was probably the biggest downfall. He was a very early pitter, so that's where he didn't really have the tires to take it to Leclerc at the end. But I don't think it would really matter. It just looked like Leclerc had a commanding car. Uh, for Red Bull, before we do Red Bull, let's do spicy stuff. So let's do the first of the race. So this is the first corner of the race. Uh, there's a couple things I want to note here. This, right here. The the front four. These two idiots over here fighting with each other. Now I can tell, just by looking at the race, and from the weekend, that Ferrari were the competitors this weekend. There wasn't any magic stuff coming from McLaren. It didn't really look like Verstappen was fast enough. Maybe on softs in a quality run, but on the long runs, Ferrari was just on a different... A different turn of force. Uh, if they didn't fight with each other so much in the sprint, I imagine they would have won that as well, but um, they're what I would be worried about. And that's what I was worried about as a McLaren fan. Uh, so I think these two idiots over here really fighting it out with each other are, are, was only detrimental to themselves. They were going to be fighting each other, and they are fighting each other for the championship, not so much anymore, but uh, I think they could have done a smarter thing here. Really, it was on Max to do the dive, uh, but then as we go through it, we can see two things happen here. One, Leclerc on the inside here pushed Sainz to the outside and made it so he couldn't come through. He had to wait behind these guys. Uh, Max forced Lando off the track, although not too bad. You can still run wide here. It's first corner, so all the Stewarts are really lenient with everything that goes on here. Hence, uh, some of the penalties that went on for the same kind of stuff later on in the race wouldn't be applied to the first corner because it's kind of a melee. Things happen, I think, is the best way to put it. Uh, but I think Leclerc kind of screwed over Sainz here because they see as they pull away, um, Sainz gets blocked in behind these guys and Leclerc is able to push through. But I think more interesting has happened, stuff happened in the first corner than just those guys. Keep an eye on Hamilton here. That's one of the bigger ones. Boom, huge dive from 17th all the way to 12th, I think he was when he pulled out of the S's. Um, but the bigger thing for me, and Hamilton has done this a couple times now, can't remember where it was, but he dove up the inside, and I think he hit Stroll and Alonso on one of the previous races, and then they crashed into people and it caused a bunch of incidents. Uh, and he kind of got scot-free with that one. Uh, but in this case, he did it again, and I think I would have gave Hamilton a penalty here, but they didn't really have much of a chance. So what ended up happening here, he's got really close, and he, this dive was just kind of crazy. He didn't, I mean, I know he's got nowhere else to go. He did the dive, but there was, like, really wasn't enough room for him because the rest of the competitors were going around the corner like normal human beings. This car can't make that corner. If you look at his angle, his car is faced way out to here. He's naturally going to now run wide to here. There's a bunch of cars in his way. So he ends up squeezing the Williams, and then the Williams hits the Alpine, and that's what spun a con round and really kind of ruined his whole race. Um, other interesting things in this corner, I think, is uh, really how competitive uh, Gasly was with... Uh, with Piastri as they came out of these S's. If you look at that, it's really hard to tell because there's so many bloody orange cars, but uh, these two guys here are very close to each other. I think that was a pretty competitive thing there. Now this is Lando Norris versus Max. We'll go into this little bit of controversy before we get too far in here. I want to note a couple things before we even get there. So this is Max's one move. He's allowed one move. One move to the inside. One move back to the middle of the racetrack. And then his final move into the corner. That's three moves. Um, seems like a little bit of dodgy into that. I've heard many people complain about the same thing. 
and, and and Max was a little bit weird there. So if you notice, this is the apex. What's an apex? Hard to tell. I don't know what you would call the apex of this corner. What the apex of the corner is and what the apex of what the turn-in is are two totally different things. So the apex of a corner is sort of a little bit sub subjective, but if you look right here, Lando is not ahead. He is not ahead at this corner, therefore he is technically not really allowed to have the space. So if you remember Fernando Alonso, you must always leave it a space, unless you're not fucking anywhere near the corner. <laughs> but he's not really, I would say he's there, thereabouts, but you really gonna have to have your car where it would make sense that you wanna make that corner anyway. And neither of these guys are making this corner. And this is my main point here. So uh, we'll bring up, we'll bring up that, and then let's bring up this. So a lot of people's complaints were Russell got a penalty for forcing another driver off the track. Russell wasn't ahead during his move at the apex, and Verstappen was. So he's not going to get the penalty there because he didn't force him off the track. Lando forced himself off the track by going around the outside. Whereas Russell forced the other driver off track by forcing himself in the inside. And that's and that's all about the apex, and that's why that's like that. Are we gonna see an appeal for this decision? I would if I was McLaren. It's only gonna cost you money, and it's not that much. I think it's like 20, 40,000 euros to go up and make your case, or pounds maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, to make your case against this uh, decision, if we look at the document, what they say here is that he was on the outside and was not level with car one. So you gotta be alongside, and he wasn't. And as that standards, he lost the right to the corner. So therefore he was not gonna get a penalty for forcing, being forced off the track. And he was deemed to be in case of leaving the track and gaining an advantage. So he was fourth when he went off the track and he was third when he came back on the track. How all the melee that happens in between there, they didn't really give a second. So they gave him a, a five second penalty as imposed instead of a 10 second recommended over the guidelines because of having committed the overtake move on the outside of the driver of car four a little uh, alternate other than the leaving his track. So he didn't give him a 10 second penalty and it didn't count as a strike because he was kind of forced off the track. Okay, so they can appeal that. Okay, so my big thing for this though and why the Russell move up here looks a lot different. Now, completely forgetting about the apex of the corner for a second, Russell is still on the track up here. He didn't leave the track to make that move. He just forced another driver off track. If you look down at the bottom, there are no cars on the track right now. So my big thing is, okay, you left the track to make a move on a car that was on track. But down below, you left the... I, I know Valtteri was one, the one being overtaken, but still, down below, he didn't leave the track to overtake a car that was on the track. He left a track to overtake a car that was also off track. So, in my mind, that's a bit, a bit of a no-no from Max. He did two things wrong during that corner which we don't normally see from Max. One, moving under braking, he did that little jut. He went in, then he went back to the middle of the track, and then he went back kind of to make that blocking move and go to the inside. That's three moves, you're allowed one move and then moving back to your natural line. Lando was in his natural line, so he went to the middle and then he went to the inside. So that's three moves, that's kind of a faux pas. It was very slight, so I'm gonna let that go. But the second thing is here, he's not on the bloody track. So Lando isn't passing a car that is following the rules, he's passing a car that isn't following the rules. So he's, in my mind, if I was McLaren and I was going to the stewards, I would say I would really focus on the leaving the track and gaining an advantage. Take that point of view. Who's leaving the track and gaining advantage? Lando. Who's also leaving the track and gaining advantage? That would be Max. They're both leaving the track and gaining an advantage. If Max wanted to make that corner, he would have to be going so much slower. And this is mostly the point that I have and the problem that I have with a lot of these decisions because the way Formula One is right now is you can just put yourself on the inside and drive as wide to the apex as you want to, force the other guy off track and now he has a penalty for leave, overtaking you uh, on the outside. And that's not really racing in my mind, you're just being a big bully. Uh, or being an idiot, basically. And Max does this a lot. And you know what? So do a lot of other drivers. And I don't like it. I think that they should police very heavily forcing other drivers to make mistakes in order to get the move done. Because as of right now, you can't pass on the outside. You just kind of can't. Because if you can't get around the outside without being forced off by the driver on the inside, that is a no-go zone. So it really is 
affecting the way that the performance of cars go and, and, the, and the action that we see. Because this could have been a really, it was a really good battle and it could have ended up in a better way. And I just think we're robbed of kind of really good battles because of this. And I don't like the way that it turns out. I don't like this, well, just defend the inside and push the other guy off and you're good because the FIA doesn't really care about that. They only care about the guy overtaking and the attacker and it being wholly responsible for him to make the move inside the track when there's a very wide car on the inside that they can't possibly do that. So it, it's it's a big ask from the FIA for me to for it to be all about the attacker. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that. I, do I think that they were wrong in their decision and their consistency of the rules? Not really. They seem pretty consistent. I, I think I agree with Martin Brunel and some of the other pundits. It, no, that was a no-no from Norris. What he should have done is given the place back and then made the argument that he was pushed off. That would have been a better idea. And, and that's kind of a team decision, and it seems as though McLaren are being a bit stupid. So let's go back to Red Bull. Uh, very good. I think they got as best as they could out of that. It could have been a lot worse. If we had two Checos in the car, it would have been like 6th and 7th. But uh, I think we have Ferrari, McLaren, Max. That's kind of where we are right now. I don't know what happened to Mercedes, but we'll get into them. So Russell started in last place, in 20th place, in the pits, and came one position ahead of Perez. <laughs> Passed everybody and was able to pass Perez. I still don't understand how he's in that car. Williams, P16, P10. Uh, we saw one of the Alpines, I believe, come in late in the race and steal the fastest lap from Franco. Uh, again, that is going away next year officially, so that's great. I don't think anybody outside of the top 10 should be able to steal that fastest lap. I would have been happy if they kept fastest lap for the top 10. And if you're not in the top 10, guess what? You can't get the fastest lap point. You can't even steal it from somebody either. Uh, that would make all of this a lot easier as well. I think Franco probably deserved that. Good to see him there. Alex just suffered from the day. He seemed like he was really out of sync. Uh, good to see Franco step up, though. Hopefully he gets a 2025 seat. I don't really understand if he doesn't. P6 and DNF. Um, the way that Lewis crashed out was the exact same spot that uh, George crashed out in qualifying. So uh, the only difference was in qualifying, George didn't have any fuel in. So he skidded across that gravel and smashed into the wall. Lewis fully loaded first lap, um, 100 kilograms of fuel, and that just made him dig into the gravel. But same exact place, same exact hit the curb, weird oversteer. He didn't really do anything wrong as far as I could tell. He wasn't really super duper close to anybody in front of him either. So it wasn't, it wasn't like he was getting dirty air. The car just was crazy. And he did mention before we started that they really should start from the pits to fix whatever's wrong with the car. They didn't, and this is what ended up happening. George, good recovery drive. I think he probably could have been in contention had he been able to not crash in qualifying. But again, I think it's a totally car related, not necessarily their fault. McLaren, P4, P5. Again, if we put Checo in the car, they would have been P3, P4. But I think Max is just able to extract more from that car. He was having an awful time on the hard tires. Piastri, good for him. I'm glad he got P5. He almost caught Max. He was very kind of out of sync the whole weekend. He was just that little bit much slower than Lando, especially in qualifying trim. Um, but yeah, good good haul of points. I think really the, the driver's championship has fallen away from Lando. I don't think he can catch it back up now. He's nearly 60 points away and he only has five races to go. Unless we see DNFs from Max kind of gone their job right now is to defend against ferrari for constructor stuff and that really does mean you need to be ahead of max not for any other reason other than to haul those points from ferrari you need to get as many points in there and ferrari is only eight points off um red bull for the constructor championship so not only is prez going to lose um First place for the Constructors' Championship for Red Bull, but he's going to lose second place as well. I really need to replace somebody else in there. Uh, this is... Burr, 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 burr. This is the starting positions. Gasly fell away at the end, and Ocon wasn't very good either. They ended up not really being the best in the world. Uh, what the, where did they actually finish? P12, P18. So Esteban got spun around. P12 was the best Pierre could do. I, I mean... Good from the car. The upgrades for Alpine really did help out. Looked like Gasly was going to be really competitive, uh, but he just couldn't at the end of the day. 
uh, Nico had a really tough time at the start of the race. He fell away. He got passed by Lewis and then he was all in that big scrunch of cars there. And that kind of compromised him for the first whole stint that he was in. Magnuson was doing really well, but he had either a tire issue or he had a cooling issue because they pulled him in and turn 16 they gave him the notice to come in and there's only 19 corners in the in the race so they had to pull him in at short notice to put in uh put on tires and that'll end up losing the positions i don't think he could have kept russell or perez behind him so i think he probably finished as best as he probably could uh, not so bad Liam Lawson, P9. Uh, so I would personally take either of these guys in the Red Bull seat next year. I cannot imagine that Perez is going to keep it. Uh, we thought he was going to be amazing at the street courses. He wasn't. We thought he was going to be good through the whole year. He wasn't. We thought he was going to be able to qualify. He wasn't. We thought he could keep it in six tenths of a second to max. He wasn't. He's always 30 seconds behind max. I just don't think he's very good anymore. So I don't know what to tell you. Great from Lawson, though. I think he really showed that he is a, an amazing driver, he be able to beat out Yuki Sonoma. Again, Yuki, kind of messy. He had that five second penalty just for being bashy and smashy, but you know, uh, that's what it is. Austin, absolutely nowhere. Uh, Lance was off the track for a lot of the time. He was scrappy here and there, but it wasn't very good. Again, Alonzo, this is just all car related. <laughs> it's sad to see how far they come down. Did they actually post anything yet, Stake? No, they still, after three hours, they still haven't put anything else out. Is this the right team? I feel like it isn't. There's another one over here. Is it this one? No, this is news. No, okay, so Steg hasn't even posted anything about their own bloody team. So they obviously don't care where they came. It's a terrible car. Uh, everybody was worried about Andretti, but you're letting these guys drive around the track, so I don't get that either. What else do we have? The F5 gang here. Oh, that was the other weird. Uh, the lap times deleted. Organizer promoter track invasion. We saw this. Was it Canada or Australia? One of them, and they let everybody on the track too early. So it looks like the promoter is going to get in trouble for that with the FIA. I don't know what the outcome of the other one is. I assume it's a fine. Uh, aside from that, that's pretty much the race. The weirdest thing was probably Hamilton. I expected to see him kind of pile through the field with Russell, uh, but just not being able to get it done. And then the Norris Verstappen. We're going to do a follow-up video for this because uh, I I believe that McLaren will fight that. Uh, but what happens when they fight those is usually like 99 times out of 100, you have to bring new data to them because the FIA has looked at the event. They've made their decision based on the facts that they have in front of them and all the data that they have, and they made a decision. So if you don't bring any new data to them, like, if you go ahead and say, oh, hey, here's the telemetry from both the cars that we could see. Um, the move by Verstappen was too much. He did this, that, the other thing. Or they bring some new light or some new camera angles that would allow them to be able to, like, they had one of those 360 cameras on the car. Or the, the fisheye lens maybe would show them a bit more. But, like, if they don't bring them anything new, they're not going to win that fight 99 times out of 100. So I can't see them winning it. Would I still go for it? Yes, because I think the, the narrative is there that the decision is a bit weird, at least from my point of view anyway, just that both the cars went off the track. So who is really to say who should be ahead or not if nobody's really following any of the rules as far as the FIA goes? If you go into the corner and you don't follow, everybody goes off track, I think. Whoever comes back on track is just, it's up in the air. It should be whatever to me personally. So uh, whose fault is this really? It's the organizer's fault. To be honest, they should have gone, the FIA and the organizer work together and they should put those little gravel strips in on turn 15, 19, turn 18, turn one. Put the strip in there, take it out when MotoGP comes in. Bob Drunkle, you got that all fixed. We did it from all the other tracks and it seemed to work really, really well. So if you don't want cars to go off track, make it just like Austria. So as soon as you go off track, you usually pull a Yuki Sino and you go flying down the track and hit the wall or go into the gravel or whatever. Make it so that they don't want to go off track to do that. That seems like the best solution to me and that we don't have to talk about this stuff anymore. Uh, and we just have good clean racing because the fight between them was amazing. It was really good. They were very equal. So from that, thank you for joining me. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second and I'll talk to you guys next time.